A dreamer is a 40-year-old male and an aspiring actor, and he titles the dream, The Little Burning Fire. And here's the dream. I listened to the recent episode on The Vital Spark, and I knew I just had to submit this dream. I had this dream about three or four years ago now. I'm an aspiring actor, but to make ends meet, One of the things I do is background acting or being an extra on TV shows and movies. So here's the dream. I'm working on a set on a production that's filming at a large mansion. Only this time, I'm not working in front of the camera. I'm working behind the camera on the crew as a production assistant. The scene is being shot inside right at the entrance of the mansion. I'm in a very happy, enthusiastic mood. I stand there watching the filming. Directly behind me are two French doors. Suddenly I need to use the restroom, but the restrooms are for the crew, are porta johns outside, and I can't get out the door because they're filming right in front of the entrance. Then I remember something. I know the owner of this mansion, and he's entrusted me with the skeleton key. And I think to myself, Well, I've been given a key to go into any room in the house. Surely it's fine for me to use the one of the restrooms. I turn around and use the skeleton key for the first time. The key is gold and looks just like a big old-fashioned key. I open the French doors and close them behind me. Now I'm in a large study. It's beautiful and luxurious. It looks like old money, nothing too modern. There's a fireplace and comfy chairs, a large elegant sofa with lots of pillows, and of course a desk and many books. The room is lit only by sunlight. I slowly walk across the study towards the bathroom at the end of the room. I take my time taking it all in. I feel special being in here alone. When I get to the restroom, the door is locked. I use the skeleton key for a second time. Now I'm in a small restroom that looks remarkably like the restroom in my parents' bedroom. I stand to look at myself in the mirror, then I notice to the left of me there's a wooden medicine cabinet on the wall. I'm curious as to what's inside. I'm drawn to it. I try opening it, but it's locked. I wonder if the skeleton key even opens this small cabinet. I use the skeleton key for the third time, and sure enough, it worked. I'm shocked to discover that inside the cabinet, there is only a small burning fire. It looks just like a small miniature campfire, and I'm stunned. Why is there fire in here? What's the meaning of it? How does this fire continue to burn even when the cabinet is locked up? Why does the fire not consume the entire wooden cabinet? I'm just awestruck. And I realize, oh my gosh, I've left the key in the lock, and that lock must be burning hot from being so close to a fire for so long. I pulled the key out of the lock and sure enough the key is warped. It began to melt. Now I'm slightly panicked. I run the key under cold water but it's no use. The key is obviously warped from the fire. Now the owner of the mansion is going to know that I've been snooping and that I found this little burning fire. I try to figure out what to do and finally decide. Better just come clean. He's going to know exactly what I did, and he sees the key. For significant context, he offers, I've been on a journey of self-discovery for the past ten years. It's been a wild ride. Your podcast has helped me a lot. I just love you guys. Now you see why I have to pick this dream. dream. (laughs) (laughs) There we go. He says, the main feelings in the dream are happiness and enthusiasm, awe, wonder, and curiosity, and finally a bit of panic and dread. He provides a bit more and says, I remember thinking the study looked like a room you would see in the show Dynasty in the 1980s when I was a child. (laughs) But what do we make of this? This, um, some dreams are really like fairy tales. And of course, there's, <laughs> there's a great relationship between the two. And this um, reminds me of one of the Bluebeard fairy tales, of where uh, 
in the classic formulation of the Bluebeard Tales, it's a maiden who goes into the, the mansion and marries a sort of wizard or sorcerer. And then he has to go on a business trip and he says, Here's, here are the keys to every room here. Um, help yourself, have a good time, except see this one little key? Don't use this one. And uh, so here is, um, you know, some parallel here that he has, he has the key, a gold key, mm -hmm. uh, to unlock mm -hmm. the secret. So that's the, uh, my, you know, sort of a broad brush frame uh, mm -hmm. within which I'm, I'm seeing this dream. Well, it also kind of has a, the fairy tale theme continues to because uh, first of all, it's the key that betrays the maiden in the Bluebeard story because she drops exactly. the key into yes. the bloody basin and then can't wipe it off. And it and, and when Bluebeard comes home, he says, "Give me the key." And as soon as he sees the key, he knows exactly yeah. what has happened, just like in the stream. And also, there's a there's a series of three in this dream. So he mm -hmm. uses the key three times. Yes. And the third time is the discovery of the little fire. Yeah. So it's, it, is, it truly is just like a fairy tale of the stream. And, uh, yeah. you know, I immediately thought, oh, we've got to talk about this one. <laughs> well, it's interesting to me that he is trying to get into the rest room. Mm. Okay. So when we think about a restroom, we typically think about a bathroom, right? Think about a place where we can relieve ourselves of whatever it is we might be needing to relieve ourselves. But it's, he uses, the dreamer uses the word restroom. Yes? Right? Yes, he does. I believe so. So a room to rest. Yeah. Restroom, restroom. Also, some, some place to go. He needs to go there. There's this beautiful, extravagant space, but he really needs to go to this restroom, which is a place that's typically more private, more personal, where he makes this extraordinary discovery once he finally gets in. And there's a lot of effort that goes on, almost magic. It almost feels a little magical. Uh, you know, as you were referring to sort of the fairy tale, you know, element of it. He has to do it three times, right? Three times, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and then once he's in there, it is, he makes this fascinating discovery of this, this small f burning fire. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, okay. you know, first what happens is... Um, it looks remarkably like the restroom in my parents' bedroom. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if he, he goes into the family or child uh, mm -hmm. complex. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm also so interested in um, our culture that somehow it's become uh, wrong to say the word bathroom. And mm -hmm. um, he wants to relieve himself. He wants... Mm -hmm. To expel probably urine, but we insist on calling it a restroom. Mm. He uses that word quite intentionally a lot. Mm. Um, and it's like the one in his parents' bedroom. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, I'm noticing that there's this relationship with the owner. The owner is not present but is implied mm -hmm. he's been given a key by this owner and it's this kind of gold key mm -hmm. and it has an mm -hmm. old world feel and it's somewhat grand uh but and and we we sort of deduce that the owner may be in a little bit of a kind of parental position because it's like the childhood uh it's like the childhood memory of his parents bathroom the owner has this mysterious fire that doesn't go out that just uh, continues to burn in this way, in this um, secret medicine cabinet. So somehow that's where the medicine is, and is the fire then understood mm -hmm. to be the medicine? And of course, I think this dreamer thought of submitting this dream because uh, in, in the podcast we did on, on my new book, The Vital Spark, 
I think we were talking about um, both the Bluebeard variant, but also Jung's notion of the central fire Mm -hmm. that uh, he used as a metaphor. He used that term as a metaphor to talk about, uh, you know, our our kind of life urge or uh, even, if you will, the self. And so I found myself wondering about this mysterious owner of the house who'd given him a key. And is that not an image of the self? the owner of the house who keeps the fire. So when I think about the fire, I think about heat. Of course, we would naturally think of that. And this is a contained fire. And he's curious about how it hasn't sort of spread. So there's something very unique about this fire that it's remained so contained. Mm-hmm. As you said, Lisa, in the medicine cabinet, where the medicine is. So I'm also thinking about sort of the alchemical aspect of this too, that there's some heat maybe that that is needed in his life. He's also, sounds like he's, he's an actor who's kind of not getting his, uh, some frustration maybe about sort of who he is in the world or mm-hmm. what he's doing. And um, maybe there's some alchemical heat here that's sort of part of the medicine of, of what he's really needing for his own... Um, mm sense of aliveness or and maybe it's going back to some aspect in his youth when maybe there was more of a sense of that really needing to reconnect with that the early and you know we think of sometimes in our childhoods these are the times when we have perhaps a greater connection to our own creative life yep you know i wondered that Before same thing ronnie yeah. sort of beset by the sort of complexes and bruises of life and traumas of life. This, this, but there is something very numinous about it too, isn't there? Like it's just this very yes. mysterious, extraordinary thing that he's mystified by. But also wants to come clean. There's some, some way he, there's some sort of confessional uh, right. aspect yeah. to this dream too. He doesn't want to be seen as as falsifying evidence or uh that's that's where i was going to is right at the very the very tail end of the dream um where the key is warped just like in the bluebeard tale of uh uh-oh you know now the owner's gonna know but he says now the owner of the mansion is going to know that i've been snooping and i found his little burning fire I try to figure out what to do and finally decide I'd better just come clean. He's going to know exactly what I did when he sees the key. So I think it's unusual that uh, the dream ego uh, is really willing to step up. Uh, That the, the, you know, oh no, you know, I'm guilty. What should I do? Um, You know, I'm going to hide the evidence or, or, uh, but there's a relationship between these parts of the dream, the the invisible, mysterious owner, the self, perhaps, and the dream ego of, yes, I looked. Yes, I snooped. And, and uh, there's no Im- impetus to try to to cover it up. I, I think there's a connection there between these, between uh, sort of this shadow element, mm-hmm. the owner and uh, the dream ego. And, and in that way, it reminds me of another fairy tale, either the singing, <laughs> springing lark, uh, which is, is sort of like a Beauty and the Beast uh, variant, mm-hmm. or if, if you know a better, Psyche and Eros. Mm-hmm. Because once he's opened the cabinet, that's it. There's no going back. The key yes. has now been permanently warped, and it cannot. It, the key cannot be used to lock things back up. So mm-hmm. in Psyche and Eros, she is uh, convinced by her sisters to light a lamp and peer mm-hmm. at her husband, whom she's only ever been visited by in the pitch of night. And when she does so, uh, she sees that she's actually married to uh, Eros. And, uh, but then he flies away and leaves, and it's this great tragedy, but it's this 
very common thing that happens in fairy tales of it's a felix culpa. It's a happy mistake because something that has been in the unconscious wants to become conscious. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in that, I think that's a little bit like this fire, is it's been locked away. Mm -hmm. It can't be locked away anymore. Key doesn't work. The, whatever that is, that repression, yeah. or mm -hmm. it's, it's not going to work anymore. Yeah. No, I like that a lot. It's a Felix culpa. It's out now. It has been seen. It has been experienced. And... And its mystery has been experienced, and of course, it's you know it seems pretty um, uh, symbolic that it's in the medicine cabinet mm -hmm. uh, where where you find the thing that will be medicinal. Mm -hmm. And you're right. There's now there's no going back. Something is now known, and very much like the tale of Psyche and Eros, mm -hmm. once. Uh, she sees who it is that she's been making love to. There's no going back. Once uh, the, the maiden in the Bluebeard Tales uses a little key and it is stained with blood, there's no going back. It's a new threshold. I'm still um, sitting with something that you had said, Ronnie, um, about fire as medicine. Mm -hmm. I just keep circling around that, wondering how, what to make sense of with that. So you know, if, I, if we look at the arc of the dream, it, you know, he, it starts with this urgency that he's feeling and this place, the right place to somehow let go. Like you said, mm -hmm. Ronnie, perhaps it's a confession some other form of psychic tension that's really struggling. He can't find the right place to do this. And then that circuitous process leads him to find the fire in the medicine cabinet and, and mm -hmm. marvel at it. And then the fire has an effect. And the, the fire has a melting effect mm -hmm. on the key. And the key is going to force him to confess something, mm -hmm. which is a, a bit where you were going even in the beginning of the dream with the urgency to find the, the confessional, i.e. the toilet. So fate is going to force him to have to confess something. Mm. But I am wondering about the medicinal fire. If we think about the calcinatio, which we were, mm -hmm. we were referencing, which is an essential process in alchemy. If we think of attaining the opus is, is the great medicine. And the idea of the philosopher's stone, which is the end product of alchemy, is said to have great medicinal properties. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a young man that is perhaps in an calcinatio, or there is a glimpse of something that is in store with him, for him. Mm -hmm. So. A couple of thoughts that I have about the calcinatio is the calcinatio starts with the frustration mm -hmm. process. And he's already in that frustration, right? Mm -hmm. He's frustrated. He, does, he has to let go of something. He doesn't mm -hmm. know where to do it. And by the way, he still hasn't gone to the bathroom. Right. <laughs> he's gone to bathrooms, <laughs> but he hasn't finally <laughs> sat down and like done his mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. So there he is still with this, the mm -hmm. fire of frustration that is small, but it is, mm -hmm. it's building inside of him. If this happens, I think as one of you had said, this may have something to do with his career. He wants to be an actor, he's being an extra, and here he is now working on the production staff. Mm -hmm. So there may be a very important transformative frustration with the career that is going to require some transformative clarification about his image of himself in terms of his professional life or mm -hmm. his identity, perhaps as a performing artist. I'm also really fascinated by the melted key mm -hmm. and uh, wondering 
what to make of that. If the key has something's been, being transformed. Yeah. Yes. It's changed. Mm -hmm. It's no longer going to operate the way it had been. Mm -hmm. Perhaps a new entrance or a new engagement, a new approach, a new attitude, mm -hmm. perhaps, but the key, key is no longer in service to him in the way that it has been. It going feels to have to like find it's another way in. Mm -hmm. Exactly. A I less feel sneaky way in, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, it feels like this story, in a way, is over. He's had, uh, per every good fairy tale, three ch times to use mm -hmm. the key. Mm -hmm. And this will not be the way forward. Uh, that part is over. And uh, he says, I better come clean with the owner of the mansion. It feels like that's the next step, is a different kind of encounter. Mm -hmm. And we don't know who the owner of the mansion is, female, mm. male, we have no idea. So I have no idea. No, that's yeah. okay. But if, if my little supposition that the, the owner, the mysterious owner might be a kind of self image, then we could say that the dreamer has an appropriate attitude toward the mm -hmm. unconscious, toward the self, and that there will be a kind of reckoning with the self because yes. the, the owner is only implied. We don't see him, but at the end, it's a sense, I better come clean. It's like, he's going to have a discussion. Mm -hmm. He's going to have a discussion with that owner. So there's going to be right. a, 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 some kind of closer relationship. Yeah. There won't be a mystery to one another anymore. Mm -hmm. So, so perhaps it's like what you mentioned earlier, Joseph, the ego self-axis is being activated here. This is about the marriage of Tifroth and Malku. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. And for mm -hmm. This call for directness, direct engagement, and rather than sneaking mm -hmm. around and, and pro, you know, skulking through what mm -hmm. through life. Yeah, maybe feeling more entitled in a in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. Actually, ask sense for of what belonging you want. in the space rather than yeah. just kind of a break in, so to speak. Although he doesn't describe it quite that way, but. Mm -hmm. I think of my own, again, my failed career as an actor in my late teens, early 20s. Mm -hmm. And there is just such an unbelievable amount of pandering that you, you'll just, you'll take any job. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, to, to get a call, to get an audition, to get a chance. The ridiculous kind of shows or commercials. I mean, I told you my turning point was in my young career, I'd been called to audition for a commercial and I arrive. And we're all being asked to dance with a loaf of bread. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a nightmare. Oh, maybe it was Wonder Bread. <laughs> I mean, the, the, my face must have been bright red. Luckily, I'm watching all these uh, actors trying to improv with a life of bread, loaf of bread, making it into a baby. One woman <laughs> pretended it came out of her hips and dropped onto the floor. You know, I mean, it was like people were just doing anything they could to get attention. Mm. I, I was just at a loss. And, and I thought, this, this is where my life has come to. <laughs> so. And then you thought, let me, let me go become a Jungian analyst. <laughs> it, it was a liberating fire of humiliation, actually. <laughs> so there is all of that. That's mm. that just pandering oh mm -hmm. and i was an extra of course and a stand-in and all of that so i feel a lot of sympathy for this guy mm -hmm. finding that little fire and asking himself god mm -hmm. is there something else yeah <laughs> that, I, that i could get going here